Oh, hello everyone and welcome back to another Yale Alumni Live. This is a really full house that we have today. So many people have come together to put this special event together for you and we are very excited, overwhelming really, to have so many wonderful people with us on this event today. But I wanted to start by letting everybody know a few housekeeping things. We are live in two environments that you probably know if you have watched this show before and we are in Zoom. So if you have questions today, you are able to put those right into the chat or the Q&A. And those of you watching in Facebook, feel free to put those right into the live stream as well. So we're going to get started. And my name is Stephanie and I am a member of the regional clubs team at the Yale Alumni Association. And I am here with a number of amazing folks that you are going to meet throughout the program today. But first, I just wanted to say a couple of quick things, including thanks to a couple of groups that have co-sponsored this event. One one of which is the Yale Veterans Association, which is a shared interest group that connects and engages a robust community of some 10,000 Yaleys who are military veterans or actively seeking members, I'm sorry, actively serving members of the US Armed Forces and its allies. The mission of the YVA is to support and uplift the veteran community, improve US civil military relations, address salient issues relating to veterans and national security, and reaffirm Yale's highest tradition of leadership and service to the nation. And we're very pleased to also be partnering with 50 Women at Yale 150, which is a year-long celebration commemorating 50 years of women in Yale College and 150 years of women in the graduate and professional schools. And you can learn more about that at celebratewomen.yale.edu. And we're really excited to have these partners, especially because today is such a special day celebrating the USS Hopper, which of course is named for Grace Hopper, which we are going to hear more about. So, what we're going to do today is we are going to go directly to a pre-recorded video courtesy of folks on the USS Hopper. It's going to be about 16 minutes. So you guys are going to see that on my share screen in just a minute. And then we're going to be back live on the USS Hopper in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. So thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to hopefully seamlessly transfer you over to the video, which you will see has closed captions because we know there was a, a bit of an issue with some of the sound due to the wind on the ship, which I certainly wouldn't mind being on right now. And I'm sure many of you share that same sentiment with our friends in Hawaii. So without further ado, I'm going to play this video and we'll see you back in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this week we are celebrating the 23rd anniversary of the commissioning of the mighty warship USS Hopper DDG-70. We commissioned on September 6, 1997 in San Francisco, and now we're home ported in paradise in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Hopper is named after uh, Rear Admiral Grace Murray Brewster uh, Hopper and is the second ship named after a woman in the United States Navy. I'm Commander Kate Dolly, I'm the commanding officer, and I'm the first female to command this ship. And I'm the first female to command a ship named after a woman in the United States Navy. As well, Lieutenant J.G. Amor Wilhelm, our cyber officer who's standing off here to my right, is our first information professional on board, and she's a Yaley, following in the footsteps of Grace. She's smiling down on us right now, Amor. This weekend is very important to us. We'll be doing a cake cutting uh, later today. You'll all be participating in that with our youngest and our oldest sailor uh, on board. Unfortunately, I am neither, uh, but uh, I'll be there to enjoy the festivities with you all. Hopper is two years into a three-year extended dry dock selected of restricted availability. What that really means, hot, or DDGs are about a 40-year lifespan. We're a little over halfway through that. We're getting our spruce up. This is an example of how great that, that spruce up goes. This is our, our war room. It used to be the ready room. Uh, you can see we've got a great table commemorating our namesake. Uh, it used to be rows of seats with a, a pull-down screen in the back. We've joined the 21st century. We've got bench seating. We've got a nice table so that we can actually meet as, as, as counterparts. And we can also have some, some TVs and some technology in here. So it doesn't get much better than that. During this video, you're going to get a tour of USS Hopper, even though we're in the availability, by some of our amazing sailors. They're going to show us some of our, they'll show you some of our toys. Five-inch gun, we call her Betty. You'll understand why. Our VLS. You'll see some of our spaces on board. You're going to see our sailors, which is the best part of Hopper. Sailors are our mission. 
After we come out of the uh, EDSRA, we're going to be going into the basic phase, which is a certification period for the ship that all ships go through coming out of maintenance or over a set period of time. It's called the OFRP. When we go through there, we will begin to certify our 24 mission areas. We do surface, under, uh, undersea, we do air, we do visiting uh, BBSS, visit board search and seizures, we do search and rescue. We're pretty capable of just about everything and we're going to employ those toys. Those toys get down to crew serve weapons, 50 cows, handguns, shotguns. We like to play. But first and foremost, we're here to protect your freedom. We're here to make sure that you're safe, that you enjoy every day of your life, and that you're fulfilled by what you do, just like Grace would want you to be. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy our cake cutting. We look forward to getting to know you better and to forging this, for this relationship forward. Thank you to all the Yaleys that tuned in. Hopper Ohana, we'll see you soon. Dare and do. Basically, I do a salute to the ensign, and then I request permission. I do a hand salute, show my ID, and do request permission to the OD before I can step on board. The OD must give you permission before you enter onto the deck. He got the right to turn you around if he want to, and if you look in my background here, you see the petty officer watching the OD, which they're holding it down professionally like they're supposed to be, and they're watching everybody that comes on board and leaving off here, just to make sure that everybody on board are safe. Um, the courtesy here must be granted. You, you have to come, you got, got to grant permission to come on board. If you don't do that, then you can't come on board. And it's all on the OD that makes that call. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. And pretty much our, our area here is to stay clean as much as you can and provide the walkway as much as you can so the OD and Petty Officer Watch can properly do their job. Hi, I'm GM1 Dag. Now we're up here on the forecastle. We're going to talk about VLS and GM2 Wilson. We'll talk to you about 5 inch right after. Here we have the forward launcher of the Mark 41 Mod 2 vertical launching system. It's a half launcher. Back aft, we have a full launcher. Together, they have 90 cells collectively. We can hold SM2s, SM3s, SMTs, SM6s, and VLAs and Tomahawks. This is used for defense of the ship against subs, air, and surface. Some land with Tomahawk. It's an essential part of the ship. If this goes down, uh, coded VLS techs have to be ready to fix it and get back into the fight. Thank you.
about that if it's, uh, we use a reduced charge or a, a service route. And it's good for surface, uh, shore bombardment, and uh, low flying altitude, altitude aircrafts. Hi, I'm Sina Sumavro, and I'm going to show you around our barge galleon uh, barge Mesex. <laughs> Well, as you see, these are our CSSN FSAs. Uh, we work every day, every hour of the day. We provide meals for our crew. Uh, three times a day, every day. So as you can see, it's lunchtime, so we're serving, and we're trying to clean up for the next meal. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Look, what? <laughs> This is our story. This is where we do all of our dishes and most of our cleanup is in here. Our cheese mess. I can't open the door, obviously, but this is where the chiefs eat. <laughs> our wardrobe, our officers eat. If you want to keep it in the window? <laughs> no. <laughs> and our methods. So, as you can see, this is where we try to implement our COVID uh, restrictions. Where they get their drinks, their condiments. Yeah, enjoy the lunch with their friends. Welcome to USS Hopper. My name is ET2 Cruz. That stands for Electronics, Technicians, Petty Officer Second Class Cruise. And today I'd like to introduce you to Burling One. Burling One is one of six Burlings we have on board USS Hopper for enlisted sailors. Uh, these Burlings are basically where all United States sailors will get up in the morning get ready for the work day and also come here to relieve themselves and relieve stress anytime in the middle of the work day right before going to bed. Over here we have a lovely coffin rack. This is usually where our sailors sleep. We open it up. You'll find four different compartments that you can use where we store our uniforms as well as a mini compartment, the A and B drawer, and our emergency breathing devices in case of emergencies. Now here in this berthing, specifically berthing one, we have to share amongst 74 sailors, three showers, four stalls, and two urinals. We also happen to have a lovely common lounge that was recently renovated. We're hoping to install some more recreational items to make it even more enjoyable for the sailors on board. But this has been berthing one. I am ET2 Cruise. I'm happy to meet you. Good afternoon, welcome to Maine Medical. You can come on in. Hello, I'm H1 Johnson. I'm the IDC on board the USS Hopper. IDC stands for Independent Duty Corpsman. I have two baby docs that work under me. Uh, this is our medical space. We also have two BDSs, one forward and one aft. So BDSs stand for Battle Dressing Stations. And that's where we can take patients in if there's an emergency. Um, or a mass casualty situation, uh, we also have, we can split out, spread out throughout the ship. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of drawers here. Um, this is where we keep our medical supplies, our medication cabinets, as well as our patient bed, which we do a lot of our sick call. Uh, we can also do minor procedures such as suturing, toner removals, uh, a lot of simple things that doesn't necessarily require um, patients to get lifted off the ship if we can take care of it here. In the back we have a ward with two beds. Um, here we keep patients that require further on care or monitoring. Uh, we keep them back here just so they're in a medical space and we can monitor them 24-7. Uh, I'm Kim Tovarado and today I'm be talking about uh, my job as a quartermaster, uh, the primary wash stations on the bridge, and what we do underway. Okay, so uh, my job as a quartermaster um, I'm the navigational expert on the bridge uh, at all times underway. My job is to give recommendations to the OD, the captain, um, just to ensure that we get from point A to point B in a safely and timely manner. Um, the other watch stations we have, uh, we have the OD, who is basically the captain when the captain's not here. The OD is overall in charge of the bridge, and um, they will be making the final decisions on all course changes, speed changes, and any navigational things that happen when the captain is away. Uh, the JOD is the junior officer of the deck. The, um, he or she will assist the OD in anything they need. The next watch station we have is the conning officer. The conning officer relays all orders passed from the OD to the helm. So the helm. The helm drives the ship. So the helm will stand here at the helm console 
and they'll take all orders from the county officer and move the ship around. We also have the boatswain mate. The boatswain mate will stand at the boatswain mate table, and the boatswain mate is over, is in charge of order on the bridge. Hi, uh, my name is GSC Two Fits. Welcome to CCS Central Controlling Station. Um, this station right here is basically uh, the controlling station for all the engineering plant. You can start, stop, monitor, basically all the equipment within the engineering plant itself. These two consoles are UCCs, the Universal Control Console. We have four of them on board. There's two more in main engine room number one and main engine room number two. These two are primary for uh, the 60 hertz electrical plant and the propulsion and auxiliary systems on that one. Uh, but any of the consoles you can operate for any use, you can operate all the damage control valves and fire pumps, which damage control is very, very important to the ship. If we have flooding, fire, anything like that, you have to respond quickly. You're not always gonna be able to go into the space if it's flooded out or if there's fire or anything like that. So you need to have remote operating stations to do so. Um, everything in here has redundant purposes. So if this one is broken, you can use this one or you can go to any of the engine, engine rooms basically. And then any of the repair stations to operate any of the uh, damage control equipment. Um, that's basically a short summary of this space. Uh, pretty cool when everything's running. Uh, you get a lot of alarms, uh, a lot of cool stuff you can do. You can start and stop generators, uh, the motors that help move the ship and produce power for the ship so everybody can live comfortable. Chief Newell here. Uh, welcome to the flight deck of the USS Hopper, the half most part of the ship. Uh, back here is where we can uh, land SH-60 Romeo helicopters uh, while we're out to sea, refuel them, take on vertical replenishments from uh, other ships, and uh, all our aviation operations are back here. Also back here you'll see this is where we fly the ensign, this is the flagstaff, so this is where we conduct morning and evening colors every night. And then of course, in true Pearl Harbor fashion, we have probably one of the greatest views that you'll ever see in the U.S. Navy. Views of the uh, USS Arizona Memorial and Battleship Missouri Memorial. Arizona, of course, where 1177 sailors lost their lives on December 7th, 1941. And then Missouri, where the signing and the surrender of the Japanese took place. So we really live the beginning and the end of America's war right here in Pearl Harbor. Beautiful view. Thank you very much and aloha. Everyone enjoyed that amazing view of the USS Hopper. We are so fortunate to have been able to get that behind the scenes look. And the woman that we have to thank for it is Commander Dolly. So I'd love to welcome you, Commander Dolly, to Yale Alumni Live. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And while the video was running, I actually got a wonderful question from Facebook, which I think I'd love to start with if that's okay with you. And it's about your placement on the ship and what it's been like for you. And did you get to pick your crew? Because our audience says that it was a wonderful reflection of the United States of America, which I have to agree. It was wonderful to see men and women, people from all different walks of life. So tell us a little bit about your crew. Uh, thanks for, uh, for inviting us out today. Thank you, Amor, for uh, setting this up for us. Uh, actually, this 100% of all of this video and everything that you're seeing today was one was Amor and our public affairs office. Uh, we have several sailors that enjoy uh, managing our social media pages. We have uh, Instagram, we have Facebook, uh, and, and our outreaches. So uh, the crew on board Hopper is 100% the most amazing group of sailors you'll ever meet. I've been doing this for a long time, and this is this is a very inspired, tight, selfless crew. Um, 
the, the sailors that you met, uh, just take pride in what they do in serving this country uh, and, and being part of the Hopper Ohana. Um, we, we are lucky enough that uh, we are, are about 35% female, um, which Grace would be extremely proud of. Uh, we are, are not only led from the top, but at the deck plate, uh, we have a, a, a truly inspiring group of, of men and women uh, that lead us. But uh, you, you just saw a snapshot of everyone, and I look forward to you getting to meet a few more of us today. Thank you so much. And the, the person that Captain Dolly has referenced is Amor Wilhelm, who is class of 2017 Yale College. And she's going to be on the screen with us in just a minute. But before we let you go, Commander Dolly, can you just tell us a little bit about what it's like to serve on the USS Hopper, especially as a woman? Um, this was my dream when I commissioned in 2003. Uh, I knew that, that Hopper was where I wanted to go. Uh, Rear Admiral Hopper was an inspiration for me personally, uh, just her, her strength and her courage, and she is 100% was always real, and that's uh, what I try, have tried to mold myself after, uh, and, and uh, this was it. If, if it doesn't get any better than, than USS Hopper, I have lived my life to the fullest. I have the best crew. I have the best wardroom and chief's mess. Nobody's going to tell me any different. Uh, it is 100% an amazing day every day to get to come here. It's such a wonderful connection between Yale College, Hopper College, and we do have a Professor Julia Adams here with us today, who is the head of Hopper College, and we're so excited to introduce her in just a few minutes. But one last question, uh, Commander Dolly, that came in before we move over to Amor is, how many women do you have aboard the ship currently? Uh, currently, we have uh, 277 sailors stationed permanently on board, and we have about 65 females. Um, we have a large contingency of our wardroom is, is female at this point. Uh, we, we have two, uh, I'm sorry, one female uh, chief petty officer, and then the rest are e, uh, uh, enlisted E6 and junior. Um, that number will go up. Uh, we'll be able to have somewhere between 80 and 90 when we're fully manned uh, as we get closer to uh, going operational. Amazing. And we are so very proud to have a Yaley woman on board. So now I would love to introduce two very special guests. We have Wei Li Chang, who is the executive director of the YAA, who is in Hawaii, lucky her, but unfortunately was unable to travel to the ship today. But we are really excited to have her on Yale Alumni Live and Amor Wilhelm, who is class of 2017. So I'm going to turn it over to Wei Li for the next couple of minutes, and we're going to get to know Amor a little bit better. So Wei Li, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much to Stephanie and to all of those who have been participating in today's session, as well as who helped get ready and get us organized to do this. I'm delighted to be speaking with one of our alums, Amor Wilhelm. Um, and so I have some questions for her. Uh, Amor, you're originally from Virginia. What led you to Yale? Hi, good morning. Um, so Yale was, uh, to be frank with you, a surprise, I think, for myself and for my family. Um, it was one of those things where I had a phenomenal support system from the ground up, from my parents to family friends um, to my high school guidance counselor and teachers at Loudoun County High School, um, who really supported me um, in applying to um, 11 colleges. It was 10 was the max for my parents, but then we always did this thing where it was one for good luck. Um, so 11 colleges and of the colleges that I was accepted to, um, Yale was one of them. And I went um, November of 20, wow, this is a long time ago, of 2012. Um, I was able to tour the campus with uh, Sinclair Williams, a uh, 2017 graduate uh, before we had been admitted. Um, his sister was um, a student there and actually uh, went to my high school and she was able to show me around. And then I went, I went again for Bulldog Days and absolutely fell in love. So that's my Yale story. Wow, that's great. We all have such interesting Yale stories. So mm -hmm. you were in Davenport, right? I'm sure I there's was. Some, Best college. some Davenport alumni on this, um, as well as Pearson. I have to mention Pearson. Um, what was your major and what led you to join ROTC? So I actually received a Bachelor of Science in Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology. Um, I 
joined the Navy and went into Yale wanting to be an obstetrician gynecologist, uh, but the Navy had other plans. So how it works is you basically uh, put in your requests, um, your, the summer in between your junior and senior year for what your service assignment will be. And based on uh, funding, there were actually no spots for ROTC to commission Med Corps officers. So instead, um, I ended up putting down SWO, which is Surface Warfare Lat Transfer to Information Warfare, and um, plot twist the week before graduation was um, told I, I would commission as a direct uh, restricted line information warfare officer. So, okay. So, um, what is your current role on the USS Hopper, and in what way did your Yale experience prepare you for your service in the Navy? Uh, so I am the ship's first information warfare officer who's actually billeted to the ship. Um, I'm an information professional, which essentially means on board hopper, I oversee communications and cybersecurity. Uh, so if you're thinking um, they, they exist in the civilian world too, ISSMs, which is information systems security managers, where we're essentially overseeing the um, cyber hygiene for the ship, um, ensuring that patches are up to date, um, overall like network security um, and also when when the antennas and all of our comm systems are actually up on the ship which they're not currently I'll oversee those as well as the communications officer um, and in terms of how Yale has um, prepared me for the Navy I will say that ROTC itself uh, was good preparation in terms of the coursework that we have I wish uh, to be frank with you that I had paid more attention in my ROTC classes uh, it's funny because when you're in the moment you think to yourself oh I don't really need naval engineering, I'm not going to be a slow nuke or what have you. Um, and then you come on board and I'm in these meetings and I hear X, Y, and Z about our engineering systems and I wish I, I knew more or, or, or I could speak more to those uh, things, so on and so forth. But um, uh, in terms of my extracurriculars at Yale, I think that that's where I was really shaped uh, for my naval service. Um, I was the events director for um, the Yale Events Committee and um, I think through that, I really learned time management, project management, which has really helped um, as an officer on board Hopper. Yeah. So um, I find it interesting that we have two midshipmen um, on this call, two students, and um, I'm sure they're listening very carefully to your comment about you wish to pay more attention, attention in those classes. <laughs> Mo so, boards, I mean, navigation, <laughs> mo boards, naval engineering, um, when they go over all, all the aircraft that we have, our capabilities, I mean, it's all very cool. And um, what, what's neat about ROTC is that you get a synopsis of, of the Navy while still being a full Yale student. So you don't have to go to, to the Naval Academy or to VMI or something along those lines to get that Naval experience um, and to really embrace those summer cruises and midshipman trainings. Yeah. Okay, so I'm now going to talk le about leadership. You know, looking back on your Yale experience, your experience to date in the Navy, um, what are your thoughts on leadership? You know, what have you learned about leadership? And also as, about, uh, as a woman who is serving on the USS Hopper. Sure, so while I was at Yale, I think I learned um, more so about delegation. Um, I wish that there had been more case studies in our ROTC training because um, I feel that was one of the hardest transitions uh, to actually serving active duty as an officer. Because um, off the bat, you're a 22 year old coming in as an ensign in the United States Navy where you are responsible for, um, at, at my first command, I was responsible for anywhere from 40 to 80 people um, at a time. And so going from delegating on the events committee, for example, versus delegating to my work center soups and the LPO, the, the ALPO, um, and just learning kind of the hard way not to micromanage or to be too involved, um, to trust the SMEs, the subject matter experts, um, to ask the chief, quote unquote, I ask my chief a million questions every hour of the day. Uh, she's phenomenal. Um, but um, to truly be humbled by my position as an officer in the United States Navy at such a, a, a young age and to have all that responsibility um, and to understand that I have so much to learn on a daily basis, I think is kind of the beautiful part of um, commissioning through the ROTC program. Well, at my advanced age, I've learned to be humble all the time because I, the older I get, the more I realize how little I know. 
So um, thank you very much. Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Whaley, and thank you, Amor. And I have to tell you, uh, those of you watching right now cannot currently see Captain Withrow with, at the ROTC or the two students, but I watched their faces when Amor said that she wished she paid more attention and lots of big smiles and laughter. So we'll address that when we turn it over to them because we are going to hear from both of our students and we're very excited to have them. But right now, what I'm really excited to do is to welcome Professor Julia Adams, who is the head of Hopper College, and also invite back Commander Dolly because one of the great things that has come from this is the opportunity to create relationships relationships with the college itself and the USS Hopper. So Commander Dolly, you and Amor very kindly, quickly shipped some items to me that arrived this morning that we brought over to campus. And I would just love for you to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about what that was. And Professor Julia Adams, thank you so much for being here with us. We're so happy to have you live from Hopper, you guys. That is not a virtual background. She is there and she'll tell us where she is. So Commander Dolly, tell us a little bit about those items, please. Uh, first of all, uh, we sent a lithograph uh, drawing of USS Hopper overlaid onto a chart uh, with the Hawaiian Islands. It is a gift that we customarily give to the departing members of our wardroom, and we, re on, on rare occasion, give them out as special gifts to those who mean a lot to us. Um, in order to do that, we vote as a wardroom, and Amor put, put it up for a vote, and uh, with, with overwhelming results, uh, we'd love to give out uh, gifts that recognize Grace Hopper and Admiral Hopper's uh, uh, influence around the country. Uh, so we have we have given the chart art uh, to the to the university uh, as well as we have also given a plaque uh, which is, has our crest on it um, from from the crew in the wardroom. Um, just to say thank you for being you, for being uh, representatives of the Naval Service, for being great stewards of of this amazing country and for allowing us to share in the opportunity to help uh, Amor grow and evolve as not only a strong woman leader, uh, but also uh, as a naval officer. So on behalf of the, the, the wardroom, the crew, and the chief's mess on board USS Hopper, we hope that you uh, enjoy the, uh, the gifts and that uh, your, cap your students in the campus are able to, uh, to, to put them on display and, and show our respect for everything that you do. This is absolutely wonderful, and um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's a thrill, and um, when the gift came in, uh, it was, it's not every day that, that uh, Hopper College is in communication with the ship, <laughs> and both, of course, uh, namesakes of the wonderful, amazing uh, Grace Hopper herself, mathematician, computer scientist, and rear admiral of the U.S. Navy. Um, so, um, I also wanted to say that um, the college coat of arms, which you can see uh, a little, at least a peek of in the, the flag behind me, captures some of these aspects of Hopper that um, the college and the ship share. I think the blue of the shield reflects the colors of both the US Navy and of Yale, the dolphin, sovereign of the seas, her leadership, and the white circles and the vertical rectangles evoke the zero and ones uh, designating her math and computer science achievements. And there is also a scallop bar, which you can catch a glimpse of at the top, which gestures at waves and the horizon, as well as the history of the college itself. And our college is delighted to present this flag to the ship. So now we just need to figure out how to get it back to you, <laughs> but we will. It's nothing that FedEx can't handle. We've learned in the past couple of days. So we will make sure to help that help that across the sea. Thank you both so much for that. And I'm going to actually ask uh, Captain Withrow to join us now and tell us just a little bit about life in the ROTC at Yale. Now he's new to the university and hasn't been serving in this position very long, but we're very happy to have him and, and welcome to Yale Alumni Live, Captain Withrow. So tell us a little bit about life at ROTC. Great, thank you. First off, I wanted to show that the plaque that uh, that uh, Commander Dolly and, the, and the, the officers and crew of Hopper uh, gave to Naval our ROTC unit here at Yale, uh, presented to Yale University on behalf of our officers and crew, Darren Dew. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. We really appreciate that. Um, we'd like to reciprocate with a, a, our own plaque here. Uh, due to the time constraints, we still need to get it engraved uh, properly and sent to you, but uh, also just a 
uh, our way of commemorating this occasion and uh, a relationship that we hope to build with uh, USS Hopper uh, going forward. A uh, great thing that you can add to your accolades that I'm sure you've already got your uh, wardroom bulkhead filled with. So thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you for um, including Yale Naval ROTC in this auspici uh, auspicious event here to commemorate uh, the commissioning of uh, USS Hopper. Uh, what an amazing ship and an amazing crew. Um, it was a great tour, uh, very clean too, and, and the crew looked like they were having a, a blast there as well. Um, I just left sea duty off my last command before I came here. I've been uh, in the seat for just a few weeks here, and I must admit I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of, uh, of you, uh, Commander Dolly, and, and to the rest of the crew uh, being able to serve on a warship uh, at sea. Also stationed in Hawaii, very jealous of that because in 35 years of my career, I have not been able to swing a tour to Hawaii yet. And uh, as your CMC uh, said, it was definitely beautiful over there. So uh, well done on that. Um, so uh, I'm the new commanding officer here at Yale Naval ROTC, uh, adjunct professor of uh, Naval Science. Uh, I'll give you a quick abbreviated history of Yale uh, and the Navy at Yale. Um, and then uh, we'll try to answer your questions. So although I'm new on the scene here, I do have uh, Midshipman Jacob Asher, Midshipman Mohammed Mahmoudoff, uh, uh, both seniors here. So they've been here long enough that they know all the history of Yale, all the history of the Navy at Yale. Whatever questions I can't answer, I'm sure that they, they'll be able to answer as well. Uh, Midshipman Mahmoudoff, he's a Marine option, majoring in Global Affairs, and Midshipman Asher, uh, Navy option, majoring in, uh, in Economics. So uh, the quick five minute drill on, uh, on the Navy at Yale including some of the, the Navy veterans that attended Yale. Uh, Yale Naval ROTC was established in 1926. Um, it was one of the original six Naval ROTC units uh, uh, joined by uh, University of California, Berkeley, uh, Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, Northwestern, University of Washington, and Harvard, and then Yale, uh, saving the best for last. Uh, U.S. Navy had a presence, though, at Yale uh, even before that, uh, before the establishment of the unit here. Uh, the first Yale unit, as was called, was uh, started by a, a gentleman named Truby Davison, um, who was a sophomore at the time, and he founded that in 1915, and it was dubbed the Millionaire's Unit um, by the press due to their privileged upbringing. Um, they would become the first, uh, the country's first naval aviation unit that served in World War I, um, and were in fact enlisted in the Navy's uh, uh, submarine base, first submarine base, down the road at New London, uh, down in New London, Connecticut. So our nation's first naval aviators um, uh, that served in World War I were actually commissioned at a submarine base. So I'm a submariner. My executive officer is a naval aviator. So I take every opportunity I can to kind of rub that in because uh, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Uh, noteworthy members of the Millionaires Unit besides Truby Davison, the founder. Um, so Truby Davison himself, he would later go on to become a Brigadier General in the Army. So even though he joined the Navy, he was injured in a crash, uh, left the Navy, came back and joined the, uh, joined the uh, Army in World War II and would rise to become a Brigadier General. Um, and he later even became an Assistant Secretary of the War, uh, Secretary of War for, for uh, Air, for Aviation. Um, and then uh, other notables, uh, Rear Admiral uh, David Dane, uh, Ingalls, uh, he was the first uh, U.S. Naval Aviator to become an ace. Um, he was later Assistant Secretary of the Navy um, and Yale's hockey rink is uh, actually named after him as well. Uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Robert Lovett, again, one of those original uh, first Yale unit uh, members, a secret, uh, became Assistant Secretary of War for Air, um, and then also later Secretary of Defense. Um, Admiral Artemis Gates uh, was a senior, a senior Admiral uh, for Naval Aviation. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, we've even included uh, Rear Admiral uh, Richard Dick Lyon. He was the first ever Navy SEAL to become a flag officer. Um, and of course, uh, it would not be complete without rounding out with Rear Admiral uh, Amazing Grace Hopper. Um, consider her greatest accomplishment to be uh, all the young people that she trained. Um, and we at Yale Naval ROTC Unit are proud to carry on her legacy as we train, develop, and mentor uh, tomorrow's leaders in the Navy and Marine Corps. Uh, Yale Naval ROTC was sundowned in 1972 during the Vietnam War era, like so many other Naval ROTC units. Um, but it was welcomed back in 2012, just a short time ago, actually. Um, since 2012, we've commissioned uh, 49 officers into the uh, Navy and Marine Corps, um, including uh, yours and our very own uh, Lieutenant Wilhelm. Good to see you out there. Um, Yale grads have served in all of our nation's uh, wars and conflicts. Uh, of the almost th uh, 30,000 uh, Yale alumni who served in those conflicts, um, 796 of them lost their uh, lives in battle. 
Um, their names, uh, classes, and records of service are inscribed on the World War I Memorial in Hewitt Plaza and the Rotunda at Woolsey Hall, alongside those honoring uh, similar sacrifices dating as far back as the uh, uh, American Revolution, the Revolutionary War. Um, I sit here and talk about that. I haven't actually seen it myself, and I cannot wait uh, until this COVID thing goes away so that I'm actually able to go around the campus and visit some of the wonderful places because uh, the Yale campus is truly amazing just in the two uh, stints I made here, uh, brief stints uh, last year. So that's the, uh, the quick, uh, what, five minute uh, cliff notes on uh, the history of the Navy at Yale. Um, thank you again for the gifts. It's great to be here. And uh, on behalf of uh, Yale Naval ROTC, thank you very much, Commander Dolly, uh, for, your, uh, for the kind gift. Um, it'll assume a place of pro uh, uh, prominence uh, in our wardroom, uh, on our bulkhead. And uh, thank you again for uh, being here today. Thank you so much, Captain. It's a, really a pleasure to have you. And I'm really excited to introduce the two current students to our midshipmen. I'm going to start with uh, Jacob Asher, alphabetically, makes it easy. And I'm just going to ask you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. And as you're doing that, I think uh, uh, Moore and Captain Do uh, Commander Dolly are going to get ready to go over to the ceremony itself, which we will be viewing. And I know that many of you have had questions and we're going to do all the questions that we possibly can after the ceremony itself. So Amor and Commander Dolly, you guys are free to go to the ceremony and we'll see you back in just a few minutes. And while we're doing that, Midshipman Asher, tell us a little bit about yourself if you would. Absolutely, uh, so good afternoon ladies and afternoon gentlemen. Uh, I'd first off like to start by thanking the YAA for putting on this webinar and letting us participate. It's a, it's a great opportunity be able to see uh, one of our own in the fleet and uh, learn more about the Navy. Uh, so I'm Midshipman First Class Asher, as our commanding officer, Captain Withrow mentioned. I'm a senior economics major from Trumbull College, or in Trumbull College, rather. I'm originally from San Diego, California. Uh, I currently live in Alabama, and I'm hoping to commission as a naval aviator. Wonderful. And now, are you, you're on campus, aren't you now? Yes, ma'am. So I'm, I'm currently quarantined in my, in my apartment off campus. Well, that's not the worst place to be. At least you can probably get some amazing takeout from New Haven, right? Absolutely, yes ma'am. <laughs> Good, well, we're really happy to have you all back even though it looks a little different than it normally does. And thank you for being here today. And I will go over to Mohammed if you could do the same thing and just tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience at the ROTC at Yale. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Mohammed Mahmoudov. I'm a fourth year Marine option at Yale. Um, in terms of my career, I want to be a Marine Corps infantry officer. Uh, I'm in Pearson College, originally from Georgia. And outside of ROTC, I'm a FROCO for Pearson. And um, I'm also on the Yale College Council and do work for Dwight Hall. Um, and I also serve as the battalion XO for this semester. And you're doing that all from afar, correct? Because you're currently in Georgia? Uh, yes, so I'm doing everything remotely this semester. And what does that look like for you this year? Uh, so it's a little bit different, especially with uh, uh, activities like FROCOing, because we don't have the in-person uh, activities that we can do anymore. So just a lot of orientation over Zoom, uh, getting used to classes over Zoom and that kind of stuff, ma'am. It is a whole, a whole different world than we left last year, isn't it? It's, it's just so wonderful, though, that you guys are able to be here with us. And we're just so happy to have you. So we're going to stay with you guys for the rest of the time and see if anybody has any questions for you about what life is like at the ROTC at Yale. And I'm just going to go back over to Professor Adams before we before they uh, start in on the ceremony on the ship. And I thought maybe we could just talk a little bit about what life is like at Hopper these days. Absolutely. Well, uh, as you've just heard, this fall, our students are spread all over the world um, because of the times in which we find ourselves. And so um, quite a few are studying remotely, um, but many are also just outside from where I sit. I'm sitting in the head of college house uh, and um, either in the college courtyard or on old campus enjoying the sunshine. Um, and so whether they are near or far though, um, we are maintaining our ties and this college spirit is strong as it always is. Um, I'd also say that this week we're marking the end of the arrival quarantine period. Classes are already in session. 
um, and very soon other activities kick off, intramurals, for example, where hoppers, or as sometimes they are known, hoplites, are a real warrior group, student organizations, and of course, just hanging out. Uh, soon outside the college gates and old campus gates, as well as in. Well, we're so happy that we're able to have students back on campus and hopefully life on campus will resume as it has been in the past sooner than later. And I think that we're ready on the ship for the ceremony. So we are going to go back over to a more and show you guys the ceremony on the ship. So I think we're just going to switch views. Kevin, if you would be so kind and we'll get this ceremony started. Making us jealous both being in Hawaii and eating a gigantic cake. I, I think it's just so wonderful that we were able to join us and allow us to be part of the ceremony and provide a wonderful virtual tour. And I just want to take a moment to say we have a lot of people watching in Zoom and we have a lot of people watching in Facebook. And I just wanted to say a special welcome and thank you for being here to any current uh, serving or retired military individuals thank you for your service and we're so happy that you could be here with us today so we're going to go back over to commander dolly and a more just for a minute we did have two quick questions that i don't think we talked about in the tour and one was do you know where the hopper itself was built and also what is the primary function of the ship if you could kind of summarize that for us so hopper was built in bath maine uh, at bath ironworks uh, which is uh, up in the uh, New England. Uh, and then uh, our primary mission actually is ballistic missile defense. Uh, we're one of a, a couple dozen ballistic missile defense, pl defense platforms uh, on the surface side of the house. Uh, that is our primary. But again, we have uh, a lot of mission areas. Uh, the, the ballistic missile defense uh, uh, leads us to be one of the Middle East deployers or a primary uh, seventh fleet deployer, which is the Pacific. Uh, so, so that's kind of uh, in a nutshell what we do, but we do a lot of cool things. I mean, very clearly, we heard at the onset about the toys that you have and saw quite a few examples of those. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was that there were 40 pound rounds of ammunition. And I thought to myself, I don't even know if I could lift that and was a little embarrassed at the thought. So I might need to do a little something while we're home this fall. And I think we might have a few other questions from folks. And if anybody has any questions, now would be the time. We have Commander Dolly and Amor for a few more minutes before they go and celebrate with the rest of the ship. Please, please feel free to pop those into the chat or the q and A. I I don't know, I'm trying to check in all the different places. We've got it going in several different locations. Amor, while we're waiting to see if there's any final questions from the group, what is your, what is your absolute favorite part about being on the ship itself? That's very easy to answer. Um, so as the, the CEO had said, um, our sailors are awesome. Um, I have a great crew. So I'm the Camo and the Cybo on board and um, in charge of combat communications division. So that's actually um, the ITs. So in a sense of the information system 
tech technicians. So the same sense as like an IT uh, where you may work, we have the same kind of ITs here, except they handle a lot of other responsibilities as well um, to include like maintenance on, on board the ship. And so uh, we're a very small crew in CC, combat comms, um, but they're a fierce, fierce group and they're, they're absolutely all phenomenal. Um, but it, it's truly an honor, honestly, to serve um, on Hopper. I, I had also just, as the CEO had, chosen Hopper on purpose. Um, when I was choosing from the slate, I had three ships that I could have been the um, Kamo Saibo for. And uh, once I saw Hopper, I told my husband, I was like, I mean, there's really no other chance to serve. I mean, for a prior Yaley and also, I mean, for uh, one of the pioneers in um, computer science. I mean, it's just very, very cool and a true blessing. So. We're so happy to have you and are so grateful to you for putting this all together. We do oh, have no, a few more questions. Oh, well, we, we appreciate you, Omar. Um, we do have another question for Commander Dolly. A uh, question was, could you explain the tradition of bringing the youngest and oldest sailors on board for the ceremony? Um, well, <laughs> uh, th that uh, goes to about every honor and ceremony that we have to include the Navy birthday, which is coming up in uh, October. Uh, it is it is to honor the full breadth of, of service of our, our crew. So uh, OSS in Hicks has been on board for about six months. Uh, he is he has uh, never actually been to sea uh, because we're in this availability. And Ellis One Kia actually is an immigrant. Uh, he he came from Ethiopia. Uh, he uh, he's been very active on the command since he got here. Uh, I, I'm not going to divulge how old he is, but he is older than me. Uh, which makes me not the oldest person on board, thank goodness. Um, but it, it just represents the, the, the breadth of, of knowledge and years that we have, as well as, as honors all of the sailors, oldest to youngest across everything that we do um, and brings recognition to them. Thank you. And uh, another question for you as well is, when will the ship return to active duty? Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're scheduled to leave the availability uh, in June of 2021. Um, so we are currently lighting off our systems. Uh, we brought up our fire main, uh, first ships firefighting. Uh, we have our chilled water and our seawater systems already restored. Uh, we're bringing chains and anchors on next week, uh, which is a huge uh, occasion for us. They've been gone for about two and a half years. Um, and then uh, as we continue to go through, we'll be lighting off systems or bringing systems online so that we can do testing um, with everything. Uh, we will set sail again, uh, hopefully in uh, late May of next year for sea trials. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll be over the horizon. And how often do you, are you out to sea? Uh, it depends um, for the maintenance cycle. Uh, obviously we're, we're pier side. Um, some ships are, are underway uh, you know, a couple of weeks out of a quarter, out of, uh, out of every three months. Uh, some are gone quite a bit. Um, we have a ready duty ship that we share with our, our other seven ships on the waterfront here once we're, when we're operational. Um, so it varies. Uh, and then our deployments range anywhere from six to nine months. Um, and and uh, the ship will be uh, heading out for deployment after I depart. Uh, and I believe after a more of departs as well. Um, but uh, we'll be working her up and, and getting her ready to go so that the crew is safe and uh, ready to go. Great, thank you. I do have some more questions for you, but I'm gonna give you a break and I'm gonna throw it over to our midshipmen students who are with us. And there was a question about how you both manage academic life with the rigors of training. So whoever would like to answer that question can go first. It's a race to unmute yourselves, actually. It looks like Mohammed's first, go right ahead. Uh, I think a, a really good thing about our program is that we have a lot of time to explore realms outside of ROTC too. So we definitely do get the training within ROTC, uh, like within our classes and the leadership labs about how to be a better officer. But we still have plenty of time outside of that to where we can like focus on academics. And I think uh, the philosophy of the commanders in the past, it's always been uh, keep your academics first. So it's definitely uh, very manageable to, to uh, balance academics and, and ROTC. And before you go, Mohammed, there's another question specifically for you, which is, uh, did you have a training billet this summer with the Marines? And if so, what was it like in the field under COVID conditions? Uh, yes, so we had Marine OCS this summer. So I did um, seven weeks in Quantico 
and kind of the purpose, uh, OCS stands for Officer Candidate School, and the purpose of that is to evaluate and screen uh, people that want to be officers within the Marine Corps. And it, it was definitely a different kind of training under COVID conditions because we had to wear our masks uh, like 95% of the day, and we would only have it off during PT and while we were in the field. But uh, it was still really good training. So I think that we did pretty much all of the events that they usually do uh, for a typical year of OCS, but we just had our masks on. Uh, they made sure to keep social distancing and we had to clean a lot. Uh, <laughs> we had to clean every morning, every evening, just like wipe down the squad bays. Uh, but we still got a lot of uh, quality training out of, out of the summer, even though it was under COVID conditions. Thank you so much. And uh, Midshipman Asher, if you'd like to answer the same question. I suppose what I would add on to that is one of the nice things about Yale ROTC, and it's, I think, something that when I was considering, you know, whether I would like to do ROTC or go to the Naval Academy or pursue some other commissioning source, what really, what I really enjoyed about Yale ROTC talking to midshipmen was that not only are you permitted to participate in extracurriculars, but it's really encouraged. So as, as midshipman Mahmoudov mentioned, he's in the YCC, he's a, he's a FROCO. And there are many, uh, many midshipmen within our unit that are on varsity sports team. So, for example, I'm on the, the varsity sailing team, uh, as was uh, someone who Lieutenant Wilhelm might know, and uh, Lieutenant Chase Skoda, who was one of our former alums. So we're definitely um, encouraged to pursue, pursue like a very diverse, uh, a diverse, uh, like a, a lot of things at Yale. Like they, they, it's, they don't want everyone to come in and be, you're a mechanical engineer, you're an electrical engineer, and I want you to commit like 24 hours of your day to, to being in the Navy. They want you to develop as an officer outside of those realms and pursue other activities in order to like get a, a more diverse set of leadership skills. And that's something that I feel like is specific to ELRTC and the extent to which it is encouraged. Thank you so much for that. Now, gentlemen, before I let you go, there's one other question about whether you think that your training through the ROTC has set you apart from your peers or provided you with more than the average Yale experience. And maybe perhaps if you would, what you would say to someone considering going into ROTC. Yeah, so before I went to ROTC, I really didn't have any understanding of the military and about military discipline, just because no one else in my family had ever been in the military before. So just the initial exposure to like understanding the important of, importance of work ethic, um, like waking up early, being on top of your stuff, I think that was something that was very useful for me. And then another thing that I thought was really useful is that there's a really strong emphasis on looking out for other people. And that specific kind of leadership, I think that that's something that I've really been developing over my time at Yale. And that's part of the reason why I, I'm, I chose to do FROCO, just because kind of like that idea of like helping others out and like leading by example. I think that ROTC like gave me a really good example of that. And so I, I would add that uh, it, it, it sets us apart in that we have like these opportunities to, to take these great classes, do these great summer cruises, have these great leadership uh, opportunities. Um, but they, at the end of the day, we're like very normal Yale students. And so even to the point that I've had, I've had like pretty close friends who my junior year saw me for the first time in uniform. Uh, so for those who don't know, we wear our uniforms one day a week on Friday. And many of my friends don't even have classes on Friday. So that there have been kids who have seen me for my junior year and be like, what, what, what are you like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm an RTC and they, they had no idea. Um, so for the most part, you know, while RTC is probably biggest, definitely our biggest commitment at, at school besides academics. Uh, we're at the day, we're at the day like normal students, uh, just like everyone else at Yale. So that's, uh, and again, that's something that's great about Yale um, as opposed to maybe some other commissioning sources. That's really great. Thank you guys very much for sharing the insight on your experiences. It's, it's great to hear and to learn about. I do have a couple more questions. Uh, technical questions, if you will, for Commander Dolly. Uh, let's see, I think a few of these go together, so I'm going to try and lump them all in. So 
we get this all taken care of. So the questions we have are, what is the ship's propulsion system? And then to follow up to that is, what is the horsepower of the engines uh, that power the ship? And do you have a pod type propeller or is it steered by rudder? Uh, so we have four Allen 2500 gas, uh, gas turbine uh, engines, uh, ge uh, generators. Um, they are essentially jet engines. Uh, we have 100,000 horsepower pushing us through the uh, water uh, when we are at full power. Uh, that gets us uh, above 30 knots uh, on a bad day. Uh, with the right seas, we go a little bit faster. Um, we give the submarines a run for their money, Captain. Um, I say We got a little, yep, there you go. <laughs> You're still muted. That tricky little Zoom button, Commander Dolly, we lost you if you want to unmute a more. <laughs> Uh-oh. We'll try and get this answer. Don't worry, folks. We'll get it back. Commander Dolly, we lost you. Oh, my there phone put me on mute. I'm sorry. They were trying to silence you? Somebody oh, no. To, <laughs> somebody keeps trying to call me on my phone. Hopefully, it's not the boss. Um, so, uh, again, uh, we, we go uh, 30 plus knots in the water. Uh, we we uh, have con uh, controllable pitch propellers uh, that are, are operated from our, our bridge. Uh, we can also operate those from our control station and engineering. Uh, and then uh, we have two uh, rudders uh, that, that uh, give us our port and starboard uh, direction uh, that we actually had taken off and refurbished while we were in the dry dock. Uh, and then uh, we have brand new brass uh, uh, shafts that were installed as well. Last year. Thank you. Thank you. And I have one more question and I apologize because there is an acronym in here. So I'm not sure if you've already addressed this, but the question is, is does the USS okay. Hopper include ASW operations in its mission set? Uh, yes, sir. We have, or yes, ma'am. We have anti-submarine warfare. Uh, I, I'm married to a submariner, so uh, he'll tell me that he's better at it. But uh, we just got a huge upgrade to our, our sonar suite while we were in the the, uh, the availability. Um, we have the best and the brightest sonar techs on board. Uh, our STGs are uh, second to none and uh, take great pride in what they do. But yes, we do have I'm worried that that call may be important. So I'm going to throw the next question over to Catherine Withrow. There's a question about, um, are the ROTC numbers at Yale constrained by capacity or simply by volume of recruits? In other words, could you take more recruits if you could find them? Uh, the answer is yes, we, we uh, could take more recruits if we, if we find them. Um, the numbers typically uh, uh, historically run around 40 um uh midshipmen uh in in the class at any given time a little bit less this year i think due to covid a little uh, a little bit fewer accessions uh but we're always looking to grow the program um and uh but it's it's historically been pretty small since it started back up in 2012 yeah so based on the recommendation of these two midshipmen, anybody watching considering should absolutely get in touch with Captain Withrow. It sounds like great opportunities abound. Absolutely. I, <laughs> thank you. There is a question for Amor that I would like to ask her only because I think it's um, lighthearted. And the question is, Amor, have you ever been seasick or has this been an easy transition for you? <laughs> So um, I have not been underway with Hopper just yet, but um, I did go underway um, for my midshipman cruises. Um, no, I did not get seasick during those. Uh, I was on the USS Ronald Reagan, which is an aircraft carrier, which if you get, air, if you get seasick on an, on an aircraft carrier, you may have other issues, underlying issues. Uh, it's a very sturdy ship. And then I went underway on the USS Lake Erie, um, did not experience any seasickness on there uh, for my officer cruise at, as a midshipman. And then I had the opportunity actually to be underway in the South China Sea with another Yaley, um, a class of 2016, um, Gabrielle Fong. Um, and so we experienced, I think it was like 23 degree rolls and I did not get seasick, but it is a pretty wild experience to be basically on the bulkhead as the ship is rocking in the ocean um, during typhoon season. So it's all very, very cool. Um, I mean, in terms of like the recruiting plug, I did not know that I was going to join the Navy, let alone serve on a ship. And I think it's pretty damn awesome. So if you're at all interested, talk to Captain 
Withrow um, and try out ROTC. It's pretty awesome. So, yeah. Thai food season sounds amazing, Amor. You made that Amazing, <laughs> terrifying. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> to pull out of a typhoon and then pull into like Guam's Bay and then um, to experience, you know, um, allergies from Guam's um, pollen season. I mean, it's all just, it's one of those things where I have yet to go on deployment in the Navy. I, I really hope to one day, um, probably not on board USS Hopper, but perhaps the next ship and uh, to, be, to be able to experience numerous ports, um, more, more cultures than just our own. Um, it's all very, very phenomenal. So it is amazing. And it's, it's amazing to hear both of you talk about it. All of you talk about your experiences. And I do think we have one or two more questions. And I know that we're going to head back over to Whaley in just a minute, who's going to close us out, I believe. But before we get there, uh, Commander Dolly, there was another question about your academic pro, uh, background. What did you study in school? And a little bit about, you know, your, pro your progression to the USF offer. Um. So I, I, I enlisted in the Navy in 1997. Uh, actually, this month will be my 23-year mark, uh, my anniversary as well. Uh, I, I spent about six years before I, I put in for a commissioning program, and I went to Old Dominion in Virginia. Uh, my my uh, my bachelor's is in business. Uh, I went to see. I uh, I was on an FFG uh, out of out of Norfolk. I was also a communications officer. So. Uh, Amor's division is near and dear to my heart as that was my first job as an officer um, and they bring me a lot of joy. Uh, after that, uh, I went to Naval Postgrad. Uh, I got my, my master's in systems engineering um, and then uh, I was a department head. I was a chief engineer. Um, I was a damage control assistant, assistant as well as, as a demo and, and I've been an engineer the, almost the entire time. Uh, I, I finally surfaced again, uh, the back up to the top side as an XO. Um, so, um, I'm primarily a West Coast sailor or East Coast sailor. This is my first ship off the, the West Coast per se. Um, so I have a, a lot of experience in the Middle East and in the Med, uh, even though I've done one seventh fleet deployment here in the Pacific. Uh, I, I've spent most of my career in, in, in the Middle East. Thank you very much. I think that I have covered all of the questions. They came fast and furious at the end. Everybody was very patient and kind and then sent them all over at the same time. So hopefully we've covered all of those. If there's anything that anybody has burning questions, please do send those over. But I am gonna go back over to Whaley who has one final question for Commander Dolly before we let everyone go today. So over to you, Whaley. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Commander Dolly, um, it is such an honor to have you with us and in your position, the question I have is, what have you learned about leadership? Patience. Um, I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, fast and furious and I, I like to get a lot done. Um, and in doing so, uh, I, I'm, I like to multitask, but I've learned patience over the, uh, the, the past 17 years, but really over the past, uh, um, two years I've been on board Hopper uh, and, and really the last six months in command uh, that, that not everything has to be now, 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 uh, that, that you really have to just stop and, and enjoy the moment a lot of the time. And, and it's still going to be there tomorrow uh, for the most part uh, where we're at in the maintenance availability. I like spending time with the sailors and getting to know them uh, more than just driving towards every mission and milestone that we have, but uh, slow down and, and enjoy it. And, and the, the, this piece is probably the, the thing that, that has uh, taken me to a different level of leadership in the last six months. Thank you very much for um, that response and the importance of patience. And then earlier, um, it was mentioned uh, how important humility is as well in a leader. Uh, I just want to take this moment to talk about the Yale Veterans Association, which is one of Yale's special uh, shared interest groups. Um, the, the, the YVA uh, can be found on, at YaleVeterans.org. And I encourage all of you alumni to, and students as well who are, who are on the call to check it out. Again, it's YaleVeterans.org. Um, for those alumni and students who are on this uh, Zoom call, uh, I encourage you to go to crosscampus.yale.edu. It is a platform for the, the um, community building. And I would love to see a community built on uh, connections between Yale alumni and Yale students 
um, in connection with ROTC and service in our military. So those are the two last things. And of course, a big thank you to those who have participated in this call and to those on screen and off uh, who have made this possible. Stephanie, back over to you. Thank you, Whaley. Isn't it funny? It kind of feels like a television show and back over to you. It's so fun and so, so enjoyable to be here with all of you. And, and I just want to say if, to anybody watching who happens to be a Hopper alum or an ROTC alum, please stick around. We would love to do a screenshot and introduce you to Captain Dolly and to Amor and for you to say hello to Professor Adams. But if you are not a Hopper grad or an ROTC grad, the programs for today has come to an end. And I just want to extend another thanks to Commander Dolly and to Wei Lee, our Executive Director of the YAA, to Amor for put, helping us put this together, to Captain Withrow, to our two midshipmen students, and to Kevin Winston, my loyal friend in LA who helps us in the back end with Zoom. It really has been an absolute pleasure getting to know all of you and working with you to put together this event. I hope that you all have enjoyed it as much as I have. So once again, this has been Yale Alumni Live. We have another one tomorrow for those of you who are missing the bells on campus. We have the University of Chicago Carillionaire, which I know I said that wrong and I'm gonna work on it for tomorrow, who is gonna be performing live for us. Thank you all for being here. We're going to stick around and Zoom for a few more minutes. It's been an absolute pleasure. Happy anniversary to the USS Hopper. And thank you all for watching. See you next time, everybody. Thank you. All right, everybody, hang tight. We're off of Facebook, but we are still live in Zoom. So if anybody who's watching in Zoom wants to come on camera and say hello to our panelists today, you can raise your hand, type it in the chat, and Kevin will get you all on screen. Thank you all so much. <laughs> a lot happening there. A little bit of craziness with muting and unmuting. Is anybody uh, raising their hand, Kevin? Oh, we got a couple. We got a couple. Yay! You guys can all feel free to unmute. This is kind of like our, our green room conversation <laughs> after the fact. We had 100, 102. Yeah, we had quite a few folks today. Thank you, Rob, for watching. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's see, we got a few folks coming on. I did get another question. Um, let's see. Okay, all right. So, hello, Thomas. How are you? Yes, Mr. Yale Veterans himself. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Michael, hello. Bruce, hello. Oh, Thomas is one of the founders of the Yale Veterans Shared Interest Group. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us. Oh, you're on mute. You just got to click your microphone there so we can hear you. Hey, I've known Amor since she was a freshman. And I'm so proud that she didn't get seasick because I'm a destroyer <laughs> sailor. <laughs> and uh, the destroyers were about a third the size of uh, ships like Hopper. And boy, did we bounce around uh, the Atlantic Ocean. It's good to see you, Tom, truly. Uh, when I saw your question pop on the screen, it cracked me up, uh, especially because it came from you. Um, but <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you, sir. It takes a strong stomach to be a destroyer sailor. Or a lot of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We have a few other folks joining us. Please feel free to unmute and say hello. This is a very casual environment of friends. By all means, say hello. I'll start. Uh, hello, I'm Bruce Bradley, class of 67. I was the uh, first lieutenant on a destroyer during Vietnam, and then um, I was in the Brown Water Navy um, with the Mobile Riverine Force. My father, a Yale graduate, Yale Navy ROTC, served in World War II, and only a year after his graduation was captain of a subchaser, which he took from Quincy, Mass, uh, to the Pacific. Uh, navigating with a sextant and had actually quite a serious war experience. So there's a, a real thrill and a tradition and there's actually been a, a couple, couple chapters of a book written about him, which uh, and if, uh, <clears throat> if Ron would like to have, I can get it. It's, there's, it's quite, a, quite a war story actually. And it's all about leadership and a lot of Yaleys are involved. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very for much being for being here. here.
for your story. It's very cool to hear about your service. Actually, this is Rob Lee, uh, calling in from uh, Portland, Oregon, and I just wanted to uh, make sure that uh, Lieutenant Wilhelm knew that we once had a head of house in Hopper College whose last name was Wilhelm, although I suspect probably no relation, but it was in the 1972-73 school year when I was a, a freshman, and he had, been the, he had been the dean prior to that. Dean. That's very cool. I actually married into the Wilhelm name, so I can't claim any relation at all. Um, and I am pretty sure that my Wilhelms are not related either, but uh, still very cool. We'll, we'll claim you though, uh, Amor. This is her father-in-law, Greg. And uh, I think her, her mother-in-law is also on, but she probably won't say anything. What's her name? I could bring her on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Janet. being here. Hi, this is Rob Greenlee, SOM 83. Just want to say thank you for this wonderful tour and celebration. Uh, I have the experience of having worked for a consulting company that had the contract to do the US Navy training. And so we spent a week aboard outstanding and average ships, air squadrons and submarines and uh, came up with the report command effectiveness in the US Navy. I think the hop was well on its way to being one of those outstanding uh, commands and I uh, look forward to seeing how it all evolves. And thank you for, uh, going in that tradition for a, a great uh, Navy uh, uh, um, uh, officer and a Yale alum. If anybody else would like to say hello, you're welcome to do that if you want to unmute yourself and say hello. Uh, my name is Dan Ward, class of 55. We graduated 980. Of those 280 had ROTC commissions, and I think about an equal number of whom I was one, uh, went in knowing we were gonna be called up anyway. Um, I went to, uh, went to artillery OCS, uh, Yale's Army ROTC uh, unit was artillery, and there I was a lowly candidate looking at all of these uh, people who lived in the stratosphere with their gold bars as second lieutenants. Uh, I served uh, in Oklahoma in the heavy artillery, uh, eight inch howitzer, we were nuclear, and then went to Germany and served there for, for about two years. Uh, uh, and I never regretted a minute of it, other than the time at OCS, which was hideous. Thank you so much for being here with us today and for your service. If anyone else would like to say hello, you're welcome to. Yeah, this is Joe Valenta, class of 63, uh, mechanical, mechanical engineering. Uh, I am blown away by what a wonderful presentation this is, Stephanie. You have done one heck of a job and uh, more communication, we get more people understand what you're doing here. Uh, this has been amazing. I'm actually part of a group called the Naval Order which does uh, naval history projects. It's a lot of older folks, but uh, we've got some active duty people on it. But uh, this, this uh, particular program, uh, congratulations, uh, Captain Ron Rith Withrow in taking over the NROTC group. I can't wait for my uh, next reunion to come see you, but uh, you'll probably be, what do you have, a two year assignment or four? Uh, it's, it's a three year assignment. <laughs> three years, so let's see. Three years. Uh, and I'm going to love it here. <laughs> so it's 20, 2023, you'll still be there, right? I'll, I'll still be here. Yeah, I'll finish up sometime in December or so. Uh, may stay on a few more months. Well, your predecessors, the last uh, several, one of them put in uh, the NROTC unit when it returned. I think you said it was in 2012 or 2013. Uh, and 2012. We had a reunion. We had a reunion and he had us all in there. We had... Uh, 30 in our class and we had 20 come back at that time. Some were lost in the Vietnam War. We had two lost in the Vietnam War, but uh, you know, it, we, we were really impressed that the unit had come back. So uh, congratulations to you on this uh, wonderful assignment you have. Well, thanks. It's, yeah, it's great to be here. The, the staff is awesome. Uh, the midshipman battalion is, is great. I mean. You see a couple of uh, really good outstanding midshipmen here today. We'd love to have you back, uh, do, a, do a reunion. <laughs> you know, the logo that you have on that uh, plaque that you gave out and that you have 
on the door mat when you come in the room and on your flag. I designed that. I, I won a contest in uh, 1962. Wow. And uh, I have a pewter mug that I discovered in our move about several years ago that I'm going to send to you. <laughs> it's got the logo on it. It's a, you can stick it on the oh, show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. We have a we have a cabinet with with uh, with various collectibles and artifacts from different uh, different alums, and, and that, that has a place of honor right inside. Okay. Well, I'm going to send you an email. I I, I appreciate uh, being part of this program. Thank, thanks a lot for making it happen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for your service. Yeah. In connections. That's what it's all about. I have a question for Jacob. Uh, Jacob, I see in the back of your room there you have a a flag with uh, red and white stripes, and I think that's the "Don't Tread on Me" snake. What does that uh, symbolize or mean? Or so there's there's actually a pretty long history uh, with this. This was the the Navy Jack, and so so as the command master chief of the Hopper mentioned, from the uh, from the stern of, of the ship on the flagstaff, they fly the uh, the ensign, the American flag, and then from the jack staff on the bow of the ship, they fly what's called the Navy Jack, and so the original Navy Jack from 1776 to 1777. Um, looks like this, but without the snake, it was just the, the 13 stripes. And then after that, from 1777 to 1975, I believe, it was just the uh, blue with the stars with the number of states. Um, and then for the bicentennial, uh, from 1975 to 1976, they switched back to the Don't Tread on Me, and they switched back to just the, the stars on the blue background. And then starting on September 11th, 2002, uh, as part of a memorial for the, uh, for the attacks on the Twin Towers in New York, and as part of the, the comm commencement of the global war on terror, they switched back to the Don't Tread on Me flag again. And then in 2019, I believe, they've now switched back to the blue with the, with the stars, which I, I guess that's the US version of the Union Jack, you could say. Um, but essentially, it's, it's, it was a flag that, that, flo that it was flown from the, the front of the ship, the Navy Jack. Got it. I'm so. impressed you know all those dates off the top of your head. That's amazing. Uh, I have a, another follow-up question for uh, Professor Julia Adams at Hopper College. Do the current uh, Hopper students, are they like aware who Hopper is, or they just arrive on campus and, oh, there's this like shield? Like, do they get like introduced to who Hopper is and the legacy of, of who she is and what the college represents? They absolutely do. Uh, we start that off um, right at first year dinner, which we've already had this year, of course, on Zoom, but still a great occasion and a lot of fun. And, um, and it's carried forward both, um, both, I would say, both in serious ways and also in fun ways through our IM participation. So um, we, do it, we do it all. What's an example of a fun way? Oh, well, there's, because of uh, IMs or intramurals, that is one of the nicknames of hoppers are hoplites. Uh, and they, uh, um, they are they're, uh, uh, both uh, carrying forward the spirit of Grace Hopper in her, in her, uh, her naval side, but also their own, uh, their own comp competitive spirit. And it's all very also quite tongue in cheek, I would say. So it's almost 5.30 and I, or well, Eastern time. And I did promise uh, Commander Dolly and Amore that I would not keep them much past 5.30. So if anybody has any last, you know, thoughts for them or questions for them, that would be the time. I, I think they probably would like to get a little slice of cake, perhaps. <laughs> uh, I just had one quick question. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining and, and putting this all together. Amore and uh, Commander Dolly, that video was amazing. Uh, and thanks for the uh, midshipmen and, and Stephanie for orchestrating this all and, and Whaley for, for the questions and Ron. Uh, we'll go to a final question is, uh, this is like the start of a bridge or a connection. What happens next? How we, can we continue communication because it wasn't just a one-off uh, event that we did on the anniversary. What, what else can we do to facilitate uh, ongoing connection and communication and connected alumni, which is what it's all about. So from, from USS Hopper's perspective, um, we actually have uh, our social media pages, the, the Hopper, uh, USS Hopper Facebook page, but we also do life promotion, which is uh, the Navy's pilot program for suicide awareness, which has recently just moved from just USS Hopper uh, over the last couple of years to now the Navy has a, a, is adopting it across the fleet. Uh, and, and it's really about the self selflessness that our sailors have 
uh, to uh, reach out to other sailors uh, so that you're never truly alone. Um, when we do events throughout the year, right now we are bringing uh, September is Suicide Awareness Month, and we have challenged uh, our brothers and sisters across the waterfront and our sister commands to step up as, as we uh, have, have hashtagged uh, for awareness. And we challenge all of our Yaley friends to step into this challenge. Uh, and we on Hopper have, have challenged ourselves to 22 million steps over September to bring awareness to the 22 service members and veterans that commit suicide every day. Uh, and we would like to extend that challenge to you to bring awareness uh, to mental health uh, and, and to those members and their families. Cool. And did you say there was a USS Hopper Instagram or social media to follow? Uh, we're, on, we're on Facebook and Instagram, and we can get a more to give you uh, the links to both of our pages. Um, the life promotion page is not only for USS Hopper, but the, we have several sister commands uh, at Navy Region Hawaii, which is, is the larger uh, uh, command on the island that oversees all, naval, uh, all of our naval activities. Um, but we would like to uh, partner and, and to share that with you. Um, and then we also do several things for our family and our Ohana. Uh, we read books, uh, we give gifts baskets, and we just make sure that nobody is ever truly alone. And especially in 2020 where COVID has really taken a, a toll on many of our sailors, uh, we just like to reach out and, and do different things to bring awareness and to bring solidarity. Wonderful. We'll make sure that we have all the links for social media so we can repost those when we repost this video because this was recorded. It'll be on the Yale Alumni Vimeo page along with all the other Yale Alumni Live shows. So I think that I'm going to call it a day. And thank you all so much for being here. And uh, if there's anything that I can do to help keep you all connected. Everybody knows where to find me and probably Kevin and Whaley as well. So again, thank you all so much for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your service. And I hope to see you again really soon. Good luck this year, seniors. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Julia. Bye, thank you. Bye, and thank you.